thanks for setting the stage for us, Jenny. This to me is the fun part. Like what kind of a schedule are we going to use? What can they look like? And we have lots of examples to show you. So the first one is an object schedule. And so we think about what student needs could be supported by an object schedule. Definitely students who are low or no vision and who aren't developmentally ready for pictures can use an object schedule. However, the, this could also be used for students who don't yet attach meaning to photographs. And so they need the object um, for comprehension and understanding, or it could be for a student who just isn't attending to a visual schedule yet. Uh, maybe they're just grabbing at their schedule without looking, they're not really paying attention and, and comprehending what it means. So objects are more engaging and it can be a fun way to start teaching a schedule. It's also more fun if you're having trouble getting a student to just engage with a schedule at all. You might try objects just to get them started. So when using an object schedule, it's important to carefully consider the objects that you're choosing, especially for things like using the bathroom. Is it age appropriate? Will it embarrass anyone? Is it readily available and easy to replace if it's lost? Because they will get lost, right? We have to replace our schedule pieces frequently. And then can it be used as a student gets older so they don't have to learn a new object for that activity? And that's especially important for a student who may always need an object schedule. Another note is that for students who are low vision or blind, they'll always need a tactile or an auditory schedule. And if you're needing more information for that specific um, population of students, a quick Google search on tactile schedules will give you a ton of information. 